6.7 is operations with vectors in R3. So we're going to go over a little bit of review from yesterday's lesson on vectors in R3. And we're going to figure out how to add them together, how to find the magnitude. It's all really easy because it's just a little bit of an extension from what we did with the two dimension vectors. So you're just adding one more, no big deal, right? Okay, so let's look at this diagram that's also in your textbook. It's, it's worth understanding clearly what is happening here, though. So if we have a vector OP that has the point ABC as the end of the vector here, so if I wanted to write that as vector OP, I would write it like this, right? If I just say P, ABC, that is just um, the point. So this is vector ABC. You would write it like that. So if I look at vector ABC now and I wanted to write the prism for it, there's a couple of things we could note that just using this, and I, I tried to make that clear about drawing prisms, how you can find all the other vertices simply by putting in zeros and finding different combinations of A, B, and C. For instance, if the point on the Z axis is 0, 0, C, so all you have to do is put in zeros for A and B. The point on the y-axis is 0, B, 0. And the point on the x-axis is A, 0, 0. So those are, those are the vectors that are um, on the axes. When you have a vector, um, this would be vector OD, and it is A, B, 0, then that would mean it is on the x, y plane. This one over here, point E, is on the x, z plane. And this one, point F here, is on the y, z plane. Okay, so if we did O, F, it would be on the y, z plane. So that's um, a little introduction. And then here we have those basis vectors the unit basis. So I, J, and K now. So I and J, we used those before with two dimensions, and we've added a K. So vector uh, CK, vector AI, and vector BJ. So they are one unit long, and they're on the, um, on the axes. And in the next lesson, we'll talk about linear combinations and spanning sets, and how you can multiply um, these vectors to get any point in the entire plane here. Okay, so linear combinations, next lesson. So here we have um, OP, so we said the point OP, ABC, we could write that as A, I, B, J, and C, K. And the vector OP becomes the square root of the magnitude of the vector becomes the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So in two dimensions, we just went this far, right? And now we just add one more. And this is, note, you should note that this is when the vector is in position. So your position vector gives you the magnitude. You can still do it with another one. You just have to make sure you do all the subtracting first, right? So, for instance, if we had um, point A, X1, Y1, Z1, point B, X2, Y2, Z2, then vector AB... Remember, that would be B minus A. You're probably getting good at that by now. So if X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1, Z2 minus Z1, and that would give you the position vector. In other words, you're just going to subtract those. I'll do an example of one in just a second. So B minus A, this is what we did, right? And the magnitude of AB is, now see, once you've subtracted them, then you just put in the values, but if you didn't have it in position, this is really what you're doing. Okay, so if we want to add vectors, we do the same thing as we did with two-dimensional vectors. We add the x's together, the y's together, the z's together. So that's all this is showing. Then if I have vector u and vector v and I want to add them, I do u1 plus v1, u2, v2, u3, v3. Ta-da! Okay, so that's our quick introduction. Now let's get on to something that has a little bit of calculation to it. And we're going to look here at a question from page 332, number 13. And 
Oh, no, I'm going to save that one just a second. That's on another piece of paper. Let's do this calculation here. If A is 3, 6, minus 1, and B is minus 1, 0, and 5, find vector AB. Okay, so you know that vector AB is going to be B minus A. So I'm just going to write vector AB is going to be, so I do B minus A, so minus 1 minus 3, that's going to be my X coordinate. 0 minus 6 is my Y coordinate. And 5 minus minus 1, be careful with those minuses. And you would get minus 4, minus 6, and 6. So that's vector AB. If I wanted to know what is the magnitude of AB, so now all I have to do is take the square root of the sum of their squares. So minus 4 squared plus minus 6 squared plus 6 squared. And that would be 36, 72, and 16 is 88. So I have the square root of 88. And the square root of 88 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 22. Um, something doesn't seem right to me here. 36, 36, 72, and 16. 72 and 16 isn't 88, is it? 72. Oh, yes, it is. 88. Okay. I was just trying to do some math in my head here and talk at the same time. Sometimes it gets a little difficult. So the square root of 4 is 2, and we still have 22 here. Now, if I asked you to give me the unit vector, the unit vector in the same direction, what would be the unit vector? So remember that the unit vector is 1 over the magnitude, so 1 over... 2 root 22 times the vector, so times each of the coordinates on the endpoint of the vector. So that would mean that the unit vector is going to be, so I have minus 4 over 2 root 22, and you can see that you're going to need to divide some of these out, and that's why you need to rationalize or simplify the denominator, not rationalize it. I write it as a mixed radical. Okay, so I divide all these 2's out and I get minus 2 over root 22. I get minus 3 over root 22. There's a 2. And I get 3 over root 22. And that would be your unit vector. Okay, so I'm going to do question 13 from your textbook. And also I'm going to be doing question 14, but we'll come back to that one in a minute. So I've drawn this one out for you. They, let me just pull up the textbook page here, and it says that they give you these vertices. It's way down here. A parallelopiped, okay, don't get all upset about that word. A parallelopiped is just like um, a prism that has parallel sides. Is determined by vector OA, and OA is minus 2, 2, 5, OB and OC they give you. And they ask you to draw a sketch of the parallelopiped formed by these vectors and determine the coordinates of all the vectors, um, the, all the vertices for the parallelopiped. Okay, so I've gone ahead and drawn the vectors in here. Hopefully you're good at that by now. Let's just do uh, one of them here. So for A, if I do minus 2, I go minus 2 this way. That's on the x-axis. I go to right on the y-axis, and then I go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there I am. And B, so 0, 4 on the y, and 1 on the z. And C was 0 for x, 5 on y, minus 1 for z. Okay, so I've got these three vertices. Now, what I want to do is to draw this parallelopiped, I want to find the sum of a number of vectors to get the other point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I don't know if this pencil's dark enough now that I see it. So if I did OA plus OB, I would get the point that's out here on the, see if I did the sum of these. So you're doing um, a parallel, like an addition using a parallelogram. So if I did 
OA plus OB, I'm going to get a point that's out here somewhere. So if I do OA plus OB, so all I'm going to do is add these two together. So that's going to give me minus 2, 6, and 6. And that's going to be, so let's do that. Let's go minus 2, minus 2, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this point right here, that's one of my vertices. Oops, I lost it. I think it was right here. Oh, minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right here, this is one of the vertices. So I can draw this one joining to this one. And um, let's call this OA plus OB. We'll call this C. So this is going to be C. That's going to be minus 2. I guess I shouldn't call it C. We've already got a C. Let's call it D. So that's minus 2, 6, and 6. Okay, so let's add another two pair together. Let's do OB plus OC. And that's going to give me a point out here. Right? So I ain't going to do it in pink because it's just hard to see. So if I did um, OB plus OC, OB plus O, C. That's going to give me, so just add those two together. So it gives me 0, 9, and 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is going to be, we'll call that E. Okay, so what else do I have here? So I can join these two now. Like that. Sometimes it's hard to see where the parallelogram is because you have all these all these vectors in the way and axes and nothing seems to look. But you can see we have these two parallel lines here. Okay, now let's go out to um, we did OA, OB, OB plus OC. Let's do OA plus OC. OA plus OC is going to give us minus 2, 7, and 4. I hope you see where I'm getting that from. Let's call that F. Minus 2, so I go minus 2, I go 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Minus 2, 7, and 4. And now um, that would be going from here to here. So that's parallel to this one, right? This one and this one. And now I need, well, this one is just going to join here, right? If I join this across. And then I need another point out here, right? That's going to give me the point that's going to join these together. And then I can put these all, all together very nicely. So how do I get out to out to this point, I would have to add um, O B plus O A plus O C. So now I have to add all three of them to go together. Let's just say O A plus O B plus O C. And that's going to give me uh, minus 2, 11, and 5. And we'll call that G. So minus 2. Minus 2, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be right out here. Way out here. So I have this. And I have this one coming across. And I have this one coming right down. And I have this one coming down like this. So there we go. Now we've identified all of the vertices and um, all you have to do, I guess I didn't label this one. Oh, five. This was G here. And what was this one? This was OA plus OC. That was my F. So we've identified all of the vertices. It's a little bit tricky. I think visually sometimes these things are hard to see. Um, but once you 
once you get going and start adding some vectors together, you'll see that um, it starts to make more sense. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is a question from your textbook again. This is uh, number 14. It's one my students always had trouble with, so I thought we should take a look at that. It says, um, where's the textbook question? Do, do, do. It says, given the points A minus 2, oh, I wrote it out here already, minus 2, 1, 3, and B4 minus 1, 3, determine the coordinates on the, of the point on the x-axis that is equidistant from A and B. Okay, so before we start doing anything at all, let's identify the point P on the x-axis. And I'm going to write it up here because I have a feeling I might run out of space. So let's say let P x 0, 0. Does that make sense? Yes. Be the point on the x-axis. Okay, so if they're going to be equidistant, it means that the vector a to p has to be equal to the vector b to p. Right? a p and b p. a p is equal to b p. So I want those vectors to be the same, the magnitude of them, even better. Okay, so if the magnitudes are going to be the same, I need a representation for a p. So a p is going to be p minus a. So let's write out what a p is. a p is going to be equal to p minus a. So x minus minus 2 is x plus 2. And then we have um, p minus a, p minus a, 0 minus 1, so that's minus 1, and 0 minus 3, so that's minus 3. And bp, remember I'm doing p minus b, p minus b, so x minus 4, 0 minus minus 1 is 1, and 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Okay, so now I have all of the the, the a, p, and b, p. Now I need to set their magnitudes equal to each other so that they're the same distance away. So vector a, p, or the magnitude of a, p, I mean, magnitude of a, p is going to be the square root of x plus 2 squared plus minus 1 squared plus minus 3 squared. And that's going to have to be equal to, well, we'll just write up what magnitude bp is first. So that's going to be the square root of x minus 4 squared plus 1 squared plus minus 3 squared. Okay, now don't forget that when you are working, you have to expand this. Okay, so squared twice the product squared. So that gives me the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus 1 plus 9. So plus 10, and that's just going to be 14. And this one, if I square twice the product squared, that gives me x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 1 plus 9 is also plus 10. So in the end, what I have here is I have x squared plus 2x plus 14 has to be equal to x squared. Now I'm skipping a step here. I hope you figured out what I did. Plus 26. If I set this equal to this and I square both sides, I can throw away the radical signs, right? So I'm setting AP, magnitude of AP, equal to the magnitude of BP. And I have this. So x squared on each side, they would cancel out. I bring the 8x over here. That's going to give me oh, twice the product here should have been 4x, right? Bet you caught that. And so if I bring the um, 8x to the other side, that's going to give me 12x on this side. And 26 minus 14 is 12. So x is equal to 1. So therefore, the point 1, 0, 0, 
will be the point that is equidistant. Equidistant. Okay, so it looks much harder than it is. Of course, once you've set this statement up, right, and then you know that, well, I've got the magnitudes have to be equal to be equidistant. That means equal distant, so equal magnitude for these two vectors. So we found the position vectors. So AP, we did P minus A. BP, we did P minus B. We did their magnitude, set them equal to each other, and bam, we've got the answer. Okay, so hope that helps you for section 6.7. And um, the next lesson will be on spanning sets. See you later.